celebration this weekend. Amen. And we're celebrating, again, our death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ this weekend. We're thankful to God. Amen. Thankful to all he has done. And we are truly, truly mm -hmm. blessed tonight. Amen. Uh, again, as we mentioned, we just don't want it to be, as we do every year, we don't want it just to be a, a high and then come down to a low. As Easter, no doubt, sometimes people forget all about Easter. Once it's all said and done, the resurrection, you won't see them again to uh, uh, um, Christmas. <laughs> So they had a CME, Christmas, Mother Day, and Easter folks, right? And so we don't want to be that way, amen. We want to uh, uh, serve God and live for God every day, amen, 24-7, seven, seven days a week. So it's a celebration year-round. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a celebration year-round, amen. And the celebration should not be over, amen. So we had a great time, and again, it was good to see the people, new people come, and uh, some older folks come to the house of the Lord, and we had a good, great time in there, and really had a great party. Ser serving God should be a, almost like a party. I mean, we wanted it to be a festive, good time in the Lord. Amen. Because it was a celebration of the risen Savior. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. A celebration of the risen Savior. And so uh, I shared with him in service. I said, hey, uh, uh, it really, we should really change the first day of spring to the first day of Easter, uh, to Easter Sunday, because that's really when life began. It was in Christ. It was the springtime. Amen. They, spring represents life. And so, no doubt, we thank God again for the resurrection. So, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, again, and there should be some energy behind that. Amen. A Christian should have energy. A Christian should be on fire for God. And their resurrection, you say, man, what kind of resurrection do you have? <laughs> so, if you have no zeal and no energy for God, we want to have some zeal and energy for the Lord. Amen. And so, again, uh, momentum, momentum. Again today, as we gain momentum going forward, gaining momentum going forward, again with the people and the children, amen, and we have more people to work with, amen, thank God. Last week we covered about the crucified life, the crucified life, we were talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the crucified life, again, uh, as a representation of, again, what we celebrated last week is the same things that happen in every believer, not so much that physical crucifixion, and now there are martyrs that take place, there are martyrs that do die, Again, here and pray for the martyrs all around this globe, even as we speak in this 21st century. But again, today we are thankful that we don't have to really go through that, amen. But again, to be death, burial, and resurrection of your own personal self, your life. So you die to the old self, as we covered last week. We die to the old you and I, amen. The old us dies, and then we go off and, and live. We bury the old man, our old sins are buried, and now we live a new life in Christ. The Bible says, Them that in Christ are what? new creatures old things have passed away what behold all things become new amen we covered last week also isaiah 53 isaiah 53 we're going to talk about that in a little bit isaiah 53 and again here today uh we want to go into some of that tonight isaiah 53 also we're going to go through that quickly like we uh, like, because we still want to talk about the resurrection again we we're not going to let it come and go uh, uh we also mentioned last week just a quick review everybody wants the resurrection but not the crucifixion has everybody got that you think about that. Everybody wants the resurrection, but nobody wants to be crucified. Does everybody understand that? And not so much being crucified physically. I'm talking about the crucified life. Everybody wants to be resurrected and go to heaven, but not everybody's willing to live the Christian life, the crucified life. To be in, what does crucified life mean? Dead to sin, right? Dead to sin. So when, when the temptations come your way, you, you're dead to it. When the devil uh, tempts you, a devil tries you, you're dead to it. Right? When emotions, we said about another day about crucifying our emotions. Crucifying our emotions. We, when things don't go our way, we, we, we're dead now. These things don't move us like they should. Amen. Right? Because we are crucified. And we're going to go back in Isaiah 53 here in a minute, but let's go to something else real quickly. Also about winning the loss. Winning the loss. Uh, let me give you some more of this real quickly. So we want to live a crucified life, being the soul winner, and Jesus being the ultimate soul. We've been talking about soul winner the past months, couple of months. We've seen results from the soul winner. Amen. Being the soul winner, Jesus was that soul winner. Again, and so um, we thank God to that. And so uh, we see how the, he came to gave, and gave his life just for that, that men and women could be saved to be that ultimate soul winner, as we covered last week. He's that number one soul winner. How many know that? He came and gave his life to, for the lost. Amen. And that's what soul winning is, to reach the lost. And so we as Christians, quote, unquote, followers of Christ, every Christian should reach out to the 
lost. Come on, soul winners. Amen. Amen. You say I'm not a soul winner. Well, praise God. Uh, uh, Apostle, uh, the Apostle Paul said this also. He said, I want to win the Jews. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to get rolling. So winning, so winning, so winning. 1 Corinthians. Everybody, we got a lot to go tonight. Amen. We got a lot to go. Stay with us tonight. Amen. The uh, uh, Apostle Paul wrote in Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians 9, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19. So winning. Amen. He had, a, he had a zeal to go soul winning. The Bible says, For though I be free from all men, is everybody there? Yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. He said, Unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I may gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I may gain them that are under the law. He said, To them that are without the law, as without law. And being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are without law. And so, all this, let's read, read it again. He says, in verse 19, he says, I'm free from all men. He says, I became a servant to all men in verse 19. Y'all see that? We were talking about so, and, and, and again, we follow the pattern of Christ. So, the apostle Paul followed the pattern of Christ. That's a, we said, again, the resurrected life causes you to be a soul winner. Amen. A crucified life will cause you to be a soul winner. And so he was crucified. Remember, we talked about last week. He says, these things are uh, now behind me. He said, these old things, I kind of been done. All, the, all of my achievements that I've done in my past, he said, really, none of that matters except what I do for Christ. Does everybody follow that? And so he said, I want to win the Jew. I want to win the, the non-believer. I, I, he's, in other words, verses 19 to 21, he said, I want to gain on all levels, the Jews, the, those that are under the law, and those that are without the law. In other words, those, those Jewish people he wanted to win. Again, God raised up Paul to reach the Gentiles, which is us, non, non-Jewish folks. Again, uh, again, but he also said, I can even win the Jews. He said, I can win the, the, those that are under the law. And so I thought about those that are under the law. What does that mean? Again, those that had a, a, a conscience or uh, they knew what the, uh, the Torah said, right? And I thought about the about same way in our lives in the modern day. Uh, some people have a background. Some people have a background about God. I thought about that. People who are under the law. Everybody follow that. People who are under the law, I, I like it unto people who have some knowledge of God. And so, again, he had to work with them also, right? They knew some things, but they didn't know everything. Right? And so sometimes we, we teach and preach, and sometimes we have to break it all the way down to a baby level. And then in the service, we have to mix up some stuff for the middle folks. And then we give y'all some deep stuff for the deep folks. Does everybody understand? To win souls on all levels. And so when you see new people come to church, some people don't have a clue even how to act in church. Their kids are flipping, doing backflips down the aisle. People getting mad and bent out of shape. But at the end of the day, we have to work with all people from all levels. Does everybody got that? Huh? All right. Praise God. I'm ready. Hey, Amen. Uh, again, to win men to Christ. So we have, uh, again, some don't know we have to be flexible. He shows we have to be flexible with people in soul winning. Absolutely. Until the Jew, I became a Jew. Until the barbarian, I became a barbarian. Right? Mm-hmm. To the gangbanger, I, 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 I talked to him a different way. Mm-hmm. Right? Does everybody understand? Mm-hmm. We want to win all. To Christ, he said, "I win men to Christ." He said uh, again, uh, "Jesus, think about Jesus. He had to put up with Peter's antics, didn't he?" <laughs> Go back to the Gospels before the crucifixion. Peter did all type of stuff, <laughs> right? One minute he said, "Jesus, you can't wash my feet," <laughs> right? He said, "You ain't you ain't washing my feet, Lord." He said, "Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you're not gonna have eternal life." Right, another time, Peter, I was out there fishing and didn't have no clothes on and different things. Hey, put your clothes on. <laughs> he had to deal with him. Jesus, Jesus could have easily thrown Peter away. Yeah, he's not one of mine. He worked with Peter. And Peter be, we ended up preaching the first message. Amen. People from all levels. People from all levels. Everybody see that? Eventually, Paul Peter was one, as we wrote down here. Let's go to verse 22. To the weak, I became weak. 
Is everybody there? Night we in uh, um, First Corinthians nine nineteen. To the weak I became weak, that I may gain the weak. Being relatable to folks, amen. Compassion with people. Just because you're a Christian now, doing okay for yourself, don't never forget. We always say, don't never forget where you came from. Amen. Amen. Don't never forget where you came from. Don't never look down on anyone else either. Until the weak, I became weak. Until the hungry, hey, you know what I'm saying? Again, we we invite anybody. I invite the guy talking to himself on the street. Here's a fly. God can touch that man talking to himself's mind. God, you're reading the Bible. God can touch the mental disorder. God can do anything, church. Uh, people that are laying on the side of the street with a cup in their hand, they need God too. Amen. Until the weak, I became weak. Until the hungry, I fed them. Huh? So winning. This is who Jesus, this is real Christian living here. Crucified life, the crucified life. We're talking about the crucified life tonight. Amen. So winning. Let's go back. Compassion for them, showing them that God, even to the weak. So to the weak, we have to, we, he said, I became weak. I began to feel what they felt. But at the same time, because of my faith, I said, you know what? God can help you with that. This man was weak with drug or drug problem. You know what? God can help you with that, man. He helped me with that. To this one over here, hey, you know what? I, I, I thought about killing myself also when I was, many years ago, I thought about committing suicide. But God can help that weak person through you. Amen. So the weak guy became weak. Does everybody follow that? Amen. Huh? Yes, sir. So winning. Jesus was a soul winner. Absolutely. Paul learned from this. Is everybody doing all right tonight? He said, I made, number 22 again, I, made, I, I am made all things to all men. I made all things to all men. So Christians, we have to be flexible to win the lost. Hello. He said that I may by any means see some say that I may by all means some save some. All means to see somebody get saved. To see somebody get saved. Do you want to see somebody get saved? <laughs> eh? Or do we want to see empty pews? Right? Amen. He said, this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. He wanted to see them get to heaven. He wanted to see them blessed also in his present life. He said, this is why we do this. We want to see them rejoice in heaven. And not only that, but we want to see them saved. We want to see the chains broken. It does not bother you to see people hurting and, 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 and without. That's what the church is all about. Amen. Partakers. He wanted them to be partakers of what he had. Right? Right? If you know something, you have something, man, you want everybody to have that thing. <laughs> you want everybody. That woman with the water pots, she dropped everything she had. She took off running and said, come see a man. Oh, my God, you can't believe what happened to me. Amen. That's how Christianity should be. We, we should be excited. A soul when it's hard. Amen. Amen. Verse 24. Verse 24, we in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, he says, Know ye not that they which run in, run in a race all, run on, but one receiveth the prize. He said they would have run the race, run on. He says, and so, again, they went all out for Jesus. And so this weekend, we endeavored to go all out. Amen. Amen. We must run the race, run all. Run all. And so let's look at this real quickly. He said, we must run the race that we may receive the prize. It's all about Jesus. Yeah, again, Jesus went all out for us as we covered last week. He went all out for us. He went all out for us. He came and left heaven for us. Wow. <laughs> he went all out. Amen. He walked miles and miles and miles going all out. He was shamed and, and cursed and mocked, but he didn't care. I mean, thankful for that tonight. He went all out, and it's too much to ask of you to go all out for a weekend or for a few days. Is everybody understand? I'm talking about crucified life tonight. We mix it all in. It's all coming together. Amen. A crucified life. Is it too much to ask of us? That's why Paul said, it's your reasonable service. Amen. It's your reasonable service. Right? Amen. Amen. And so, again, 
all out. It doesn't mean going all out. Again, I've stuck this here. Going out all out does not mean running ragged either all over the place. We don't, again, today, sometimes, again, we, we, we have to do certain things, but again, but we want to uh, go all out. And, and again, here today, I uh, see God moving them out of the way. All out in our spirit. Amen. All out in our efforts for the Lord. All out in fervency and prayer. I'm giving you just some points here. Again, here today, uh, um, all out in prayer for last weekend and after the weekend's over now let's go all out and pray for them souls amen that it did come to the house of the lord amen that's why i be share with you again many weren't able to go out with us inviting but will you take some time out to pray while we are inviting amen amen god help them Again of the day, we pray, that's our prayer, that God will help them. There's new kids that came, amen, new kids came, and we so do we, let's go all out and pray for those new kids. Amen. amen. Then y'all thought about this, about going all out, going all out, we went, we did a lot this weekend, amen. We're not going to do that every weekend. Thank God for the, them baskets, that was a blessing, Reverend Sister Johnson, amen. But again today, that's the early stages. I like what he said last week, that's going to be a memorable time for them. They'll never forget that. They'll never forget it. Man, you remember that time in Easter? We got those baskets from the children's church. Man, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. Uh, they were rem- they were going to remember the stories. I remember stories from Sunday school as a kid. I remember that. I remember those teachers up there having all that fun stuff for us to do. And they put a seat in my heart. Yeah, Amen. Amen. They're going to remember the games and the prizes and the songs that they learned. That's all soul winning. And you're soul winning at an early stage. Amen. They're going to remember Miss Brittany. Yeah, Miss Brittany taught the class. Right? You are a key component to the early development in their soul. Amen. Soul winning. Soul winning. Amen. Have a fun night. One little girl said one time, she said, I want to be just like Sister Whitlock when I grow up. I want to be a Sunday school teacher just like Sister Whitlock. That's what she said. Remember that? Joel. She told you that. She told her mother told me that. She said, guess what she said? She said she wants to be a Sunday school teacher just like Sister Whitlock when she gets big. A seed. Soul winner. That's all they know. A soul winner. Amen. Amen. Let's look at some more of this. Number 24. He says, so run. This is 924. 1 Corinthians 924. We may go a little long tonight. So run. So run. Why be bringing all this up? Run with all your might. Run. He says, let's run that we may obtain. And every man that's striving for the mysteries of uh, uh, is temporal in all things. He says, some men go after the natural things. They go after these regular things. He says, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. These things that we do for God, church today, it's written in heaven. God's going to bless that thing. He talked about a corruptible crown, and the commentary talked about, you know, over in Greece and different places, they have those, 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 uh, I don't know, ivory crowns or whatever, them little leaf crowns. <laughs> he said, them things going to dry up and die. Caesar running around with that little crown on his head. Uh, all that junk's going to fade away. That's a corruptible crown. I saw a picture of Queen Elizabeth all day. She has a corruptible crown. <laughs> right, when she was young. That's a corruptible crown. Church of day, there's something that is vibrant. Let's look at it some more. He says, therefore run not, therefore I run, so run, in verse 26, I so run not as uncertainty, for so I fight, not as one that beateth the air. We want to have impact tonight, amen. Impact, so winning impact, amen. Not to beat the air, church of the day, not just to go through the motions, but impact, impact. He says, I don't want to just beat the, in other words, shadow boxing. Everybody know what shadow boxing is. How many like boxing? If you like boxing, don't like boxing. He was talking about shadow boxing. He said, I don't want to just be shadow boxing. Mm-hmm. He said, I don't want to just be just uh, uh, dancing right around in, in, in the ring by myself. He said, I want to hit some blows. I want to hit, hit somebody. Mm-hmm. Church tonight, but let's hit the devil. Amen. Amen. And I said this weekend, I said, man, we're going to make the devil real mad this weekend. Amen. And yes, we made the devil real mad this weekend. Amen. Why? Because again in the day, Jesus is risen. Amen. Amen. Now, no doubt, we see here tonight, but we begin here today. So every impact, impact in our service, impact in our service, I believe it was impactful service. I believe in all facets of it, it was impactful. 
the songs and again everything uh, again the worship and the, uh, again into the children's church I believe it all had an impact and then the food and fellowship afterwards everything was impactful so winning so winning again today our labors are not in vain our in labors that our labors be in vain the, the very piece of cake one man said years ago he said I can taste the love in this cake you remember this sister he said I can taste the love in this food it's all a part of soul winning. The smile that we have. Soul winning. Hospitality. This is all part of the crucified life. Soul winning. The smile. Smile. Let me, everybody. Amen. Smile. Why? Because God is smile. Again, here today, they will remember and say, hey, they smile at me. But they're also going to remember the frown. And they're going to never come back again. Because we complained they was taking too much food. <laughs> right? Or they took my seat. So winning. So winning. Right? Everybody good? Crucified life. Jesus had to do all of this. He had to go through all of that. The sight. He did it all for us. The pain and the suffering. I always had enough time to go through all that. I'm going to try to hit this back in Isaiah 53 again. We talk about the, we ain't going to let Easter come and go. We need to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of our own lives every day. Amen. Everybody got that? This is good listening weather tonight. Amen. Amen. Number 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He said, I keep my body and bring it under subjection. What I want to do, I have to subject that thing. I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like really going out there today. I bring my body into subjection because there may be somebody that needs a flyer at New Lot. As we pass out at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, feet hurting, back hurting, somebody new may come to Bible study tonight. I bring my body into subjection. Hello. He said, at least by any means, I have preached to others, and I'll be some assassin with myself. So again, again here today, uh, again, let us be crucified. He said, not only that, but let me, I want to make it to heaven. Amen. And so others will see also. So we do these things for the Lord. Amen. That was kind of a uh, nice session. Amen. That's good stuff, folks. Again, that's good stuff. We got more good stuff to come. So Isaiah 53 touched on that. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 that was one of the key verses in our crucified life. Give me some more minutes here, guys. Amen. Can we stay a little bit longer tonight? The crucified life. The crucified life. The crucified life. The crucified life says, hey, I'm not going to watch my clock tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The crucified life says, hey, it don't matter what time it is. We'll stay out all night long walking around Times Square, man, until 2 o'clock in the morning. For what? <laughs> For what? <laughs> right? Go to the ball game, fighting traffic. I'm sitting in traffic trying to make it home. 11 o'clock at night. For what? Why? <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? Bible study, we're watching the clock. Hey, it's almost, right, he's about to wrap this thing up, preaching. Amen. But let's go some more. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. So see, I, I got to give you some extra. Matter of fact, that's my excuse tonight. We're not going to have Bible study next week. We're going to be at a conference. 50th anniversary conference. Amen. We're going to be at it. So next week, next Tuesday and Thursday, there will not be a Bible study or a, th a Thursday night service. We will have it on the weekends. The book in the weekend, Sunday. Sunday, we will be here. But Tuesday and Thursday will not be. So I got to give you two weeks worth. All right? Let's go. That's a good excuse, right? Isaiah 53. Let's go. Isaiah 53. Amen. Isaiah 53. The Bible says in verse 1. I'm going to go through this quickly because I, I got a lot more to cover, guys. I got a lot more to cover. And so Isaiah 53, you ready? He said, who believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Again, back, we taught this in the soul winner, the crucified life. And so back to being a soul winner, we have to believe the report. Verse 1, let's read it again. Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Again in the day, we have to believe in order to go soul winner. And at the end of the day, that's a sign that you do believe in what you're doing. That's a sign that you believe in the Lord. Because you want to tell somebody about the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Again today, number two, he says today, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when he, uh, we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. That we should desire him. Verse 3, squeezes in two. He says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow. He says, and acquainted with grief. And we, uh, we hid 
as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. I grabbed those two verses real quickly. A Christian soul when it, uh, again in verse two will rise from dry ground. Amen. We rise in spite of we have to rise and we have to raise up through this dry ground. Amen. Let's be fruitful even when the, we live in a dry society that's godless. But again, we still can be fruitful. Amen. Amen. And then in, in spite of the conditions, in spite of the conditions, the crucified life, in spite of the conditions, we still will flourish. Amen. The crucified life. A soul winner. We also mentioned in verse 3, uh, he, Jesus was rejected. Soul winners, we will we, we reject it sometimes. We will be despised at times. Amen. Again today, the crucified life, you as a Christian will be despised sometimes. Again, back to what he said, we want to make the devil real mad this weekend. And so naturally, Judas will pop up. Various ones will pop up. People are not going to like it. What we doing. People are not going to like it. Uh, Again, here today, the services, various things, it will always be that way, but people will despise you for what you believe tonight. Amen. He was despised, so we live the same life. Verse 4, let's go to verse 4. In Isaiah 53, 4, he says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Again, and so I, I want, I'm tying this into being a soul winner. And being a Christian, all this is about back to what we said, death, burial, and resurrection. And so this, a soul winner will bear the pain. Let's read it again. Now, Surely he hath borne our griefs and buried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. We as soul winners, we go through, we, again, we go out. People don't understand. They, uh, many times I was at on my job, they was talking about how they, he said, oh, man, we, you burn the candles on both ends. You're here, then you have to go and be a preacher at the same time. You can't just go home and relax. We burn the candle on both ends. And so, again, the crucified life, and, and really all of us, each one of us go to work, different ones go to work in various things. But, again, you sacrifice to come down to the Lord. You sacrifice to do for God. You sacrifice to do various things. And so it's, it can be painful to the flesh. Amen. But we live a crucified life tonight. Amen. Does everybody follow that? I'm trying to listen together to how we are live the same breath, bread, and resurrection, a crucified life. He says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He says, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and his stripes we are healed. I wrote down about that, tying it into our personal lives. We will be wounded in Christianity by some, by, by, even by our own people. As Jesus was wounded by his own people, his own Jewish people turned it back on him. No doubt the Roman soldiers crucified him, but he was wounded by his very own. Amen. He says, and through it all, uh, again, but somebody can get some healing out of it. Even though we get pain, it's painful, and no doubt people reject us. No doubt, but somebody's going to get healed from that. Somebody gets saved out of it. Somebody can get a blessing from it. Amen. And so realize that your labor is not in vain. Again, here today, the, 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 the cross that we carry, there's some healing to somebody's life that you can bring to them. I'm trying to tie all this together to your personal life. The Bible goes on in verse 6. He says, we are like sheep as gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own ways. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And again, a soul winner's attitude that Jesus, we will never forget this. Amen. We will never forget this, what he's done for us. That should be your soul winner's attitude. When you read that verse right there and say, man, he did this for us. He took on our iniquities for us. That should be a driving force for you. They say, let me reach somebody for Christ. So everybody follow them. And we went on a little bit further about, again, uh, and, and as we do that, we want to get somebody back to the shepherd, back to the shepherd. I'm going to, uh, verses 7 through 9, I'm going to use this in another section real quickly. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And yet, he opened out his mouth. That's key. That's key. He says, he was brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before the, his shearers is done is dumb and so he opened out a mouth he talked about how he went to the cross and not even opened his mouth about it he didn't complain he complained in, in the prayer but then he cut it off as he, he complained to his follower but he said let this cup pass from me after that he shut it down and went on with the, the father's business amen as we said he opened out his mouth <coughs> we're gonna get back to that in a minute the bible says and he, he he's great he made his grave with the wicked in verse nine and the rich in death with the rich in death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth amen even though he did all this, he kept his tongue, he kept his attitude, he kept his life. That's a crucified life. Amen. That is a crucified life to keep your mind, to stay focused, to stay on point, to keep your attitude. It's, you say, preach, that's hard. I know, but we, this is where we gain our, our pattern from right here. We gain our pattern from our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, God, help me be a better Christian with my attitude and my ways. Amen. Let's look at some more of this. Number, not, number 10, he says, yet, yet it, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
He said, he, he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He said, he made his soul an offering for sin. And then he went on and said, uh, he says, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasures of the Lord shall prosper his hand. He was talking about the reward that was coming from it. He says, he shall see the travail of his soul and she shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear the iniquities. Again today, there's a reward in it all coming. And in verse 12 is what I was really trying to draw you to. He says, therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressor. That's the soul winner's vo uh, verse right there. He, he, he did what? He did what? He poured out his soul all the way to death. He gave us all, all the way down. Back to what we said, run all, run all. We talk about running all in, in, in Corinthians. Run all. He did it all for us. And so let's do the same thing. That's the, our reasonable service to run all, all the way to the end. We sing that song. I must run on. <laughs> Through the storm and the rain, I must run on. Amen. And so he was numbered with the transgressors and all these different things. But I, I, I run out about these 10 through 12. He says, it was, benefit, it, uh, it was ben for the benefit of others. It was for the benefit of others. Again today, and we lay down our lives for the benefit of others. Amen. He did it for others, no doubt, and let's do the same thing. But I want to draw you back to verse 7 through 9. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. And then he later on said about, in verse 9, about there was no deceit at the end of that verse. And I want to bring you back to that about the, let's go to First Peter, First Peter. So keep that in your mind. He opened out his mouth. He opened out his mouth. Right? Don't open your mouth. <laughs> Y'all quiet. I, I don't mean y'all have to be quiet right now. Amen. But first Peter, first Peter one, three. First Peter three. He opened out his mouth. Amen. But I I I, I posted a, 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 a verse this morning on Facebook. Amen. On Facebook and, and, and a verse eight. First Peter three eight. I'm almost done. This is the last little section here, right? First Peter three eight. And we're gonna go through all of it because I I, I want to give you some of this tonight. But I want to use this as a springboard. And I said, man, as I read that this morning, I was like, wow, that could go today. It's what's drinking all of this, refreshed all of this. He says, finally, be ye all of one mind. Have, yes. All of one mind. What mind? The mind of Christ. Back to what we said this morning about the mind of Christ, Sunday morning. Let's have the mind of Christ. One mind for one purpose. Having compassion one of another. Love the brother and be pitiful. Be courteous. And so that was a, a verse of the day today on the Facebook page. But as I was reading, I said, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Let's go to verse 1. Amen. Let's go to verse 1. I'm going to stick some of this in here. All right? Verse 1, it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that you may obey not in the word. If any obey not in the word, they also may be without be won by the conversation of wives. Let's read it again. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, I'm talking about those outsiders, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of wives. Amen. Those that are without can see your humility. Ladies, single ladies, put this in your, put this in your heart pocket. Say, God, let me be this way was my husband. Amen. Let's read it again. Likewise, wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Ladies don't like this verse. I did a wedding one time. Ladies said, ah, I don't, take that verse out. <laughs> I was like, we're going to read some verses of scripture. And I gave, out, I gave him an outline. I said, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I said, man, he's starting off on a rough patch right now. <laughs> You're going to be up on the rooftop not too long, buddy. <laughs> Amen. That's the verse about husbands being on the roof. Amen. Bear with me tonight, folks. I'm, I, amen. I'm excited. Again, here today. Uh, he says, likewise, wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. If any obey not the word, I'm talking about, again, those that are outside, they also may be without, without the word, be won by the conversation. So people are watching. Amen. Your words can win somebody to God. You can win somebody by your conversation. Amen. Does everybody follow that? By your conversation. I had a man one time came to church. He said, man, you got a good wife, man. These guys, they were next door and they had a third, uh, what do you call that thing? The three-quarter house. 
And they had a three quarter house next door, and these guys would come in. One man said, Man, you got a wife to stick to you like a tight sweater, man. <laughs> New, New Yorkers, man, they something else. With that strong New York accent. But then I've had a different ones say, Man, phew, wow, you blessed. To where your wife comes to church with you? To where your wife is, you know, different things? But again in the day, and so that right there, again in the day, the conversation is important that those that are without can see. Does everybody follow that? When somebody, by your conversation, unbelieving husband, again, I was thinking about that, it's a verse about the unbelieving husband in Corinthians, another place in Corinthians, or the unbelieving wife, and, and, and again, for the unbelieving husband and the unbelieving children may be won over. You can win over your neighbor, amen. Ladies, you can win over your neighbor. Walls are thin in New York, houses are close in New York. Summertime, the windows open. <laughs> And they can hear you yapping in, hello. Man, the neighbors are listening. Conversation. I'm talking about soul winning, amen. How many, how many like that, amen? A crucified tongue, he opened not his mouth when he didn't feel good. Come on. When Jesus didn't feel good, they nailed him, he hurt. It hurt, but he opened not his mouth. Is everybody following that? This is two weeks worth of Bible study, amen? Again today, the walls are thin and the houses are close. I, I said it already about the rooftop Bible study. All right, let's move to the next verse. Amen. He said, while they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. How's our conversation? Is it coupled with fear? Fear of what? Fear of God. I don't want God. Or the rapture of the church could take place at any moment, and I'm in here acting up. Amen. Hello. People don't live their lives that way that the rapture of the church can take place. Any, and we're not just talking about the why, we're talking about everybody. Again in the day, the rapture of the church can take place anytime. And man, uh, the last words of our last words could be some vital words. Again in the day, the crucified tongue tonight. Amen. Does everybody see this? Read it again. Behold, they, your church conversation coupled with fear. So we fear God. It's important how we live our lives. Hey, Amen. It's important how we live our lives. Everybody follow. Hey, man, this is good stuff, folks. And so let's, uh, let's keep your hand here. Keep your hand here. But I need you to jump over to Corinthians real quickly. Corinthians 7. This is two hours worth of Bible study. Amen. Two, uh, two, two, two Bible studies worth. 1 Corinthians seven thirteen. This is back to the wise about, again, let's read. It's a key verse about this. Because he was dealing with divorce and various things. And Corinthians 7, Apostle Paul was dealing with divorce. And he, he, he came here in 1 Corinthians seven thirteen. Is everybody there? 1 Corinthians seven thirteen. He said, the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. So again, this is a scenario where the wife's husband is not saved. The woman that hath the husband, verse 13 again, and the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her leave him. So if the husband's fine with her going to church, fine, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. I'm going to stay at home and drink beer. As he said, he said, if it's fine with her, verse 14, he said, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else your children unclean. He says, but now are they holy. Verse 15 is what I'm bringing to you. He says, if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case. He's talking about div divorce. If they don't want to stay, uh, you're free uh, from that marriage. Amen. Number, number 15, half of 15 says, but God hath called us unto peace. For what, for what knoweth thou? O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? You never know. Through your lifestyle, that man may eventually come walking in the door right behind you. Man came this week and he said, yeah, my wife drugged me out, man. She drugged me out the house today for search. You never know. You got to live your life. Live that life for that unbelieving spouse. So winning. So winning. To the non-believers, everybody there, let's go back to Peter. You say, man, I don't want to go back to Peter. <laughs> let's go back to Peter. First Peter 3. I told you I'd keep your hands there. I'm almost done, guys. Amen? 
So again, back to verse two again. He says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So again, your chaste conversation is important. Your conversation, again, today it can win somebody. Verse three says, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of platinum of hair and the wearing of gold and the putting on apparel. He said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meekness, quiet and quiet, of a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God is a great price. See, the heavenly father looked down from heaven and said, behold, my son in whom I'm well pleased. He saw him, no doubt. It was a great price. Are we talking about the tongue? We still talking about the tongue? Again today, so, or even just life in general. When he saw Jesus, he saw a pleasing life. Let's go back to verse three. He was dealing with the outward man. A man does all manners of nonsense to his body, <laughs> right? We pierce ourselves, we tattoo ourselves, we uh, uh, paint up our faces and all these different things that people do to, for beauty, for beauty. But Jesus, the Bible says today, he was not looking for the outward beauty. He's looking for the inward beauty. The inward beauty. Amen. Amen. The inward beauty. So people put on a facade of all these different things to try to look value of value. That's why people do all that stuff. To look of value, to look better. God made you the way he wants you to look. Amen. When you came out that wound, that's how God wants you to look. Don't waste your money on that nonsense. Amen. Amen. The Bible goes on and says this. He says, the outward man, put on an apparel. He says, but the inward man, verse 4 again. The inward man, the inward man. The inward man, the meek and quiet spirit. He said, this is a great price. Again, today, God is looking for the inward beauty. And attitude is a huge turnoff. You can be the most beautiful woman in the face of this earth. But man, if your attitude stinks, it does not matter. We talking about someone tonight, amen. You can go see that movie star. Hey, ooh, look at her. A TV personality. Ooh, ooh, go ask for an autograph. Uh, she turns her nose up at you. There's a real... At, uh, in a, in the, in a, the inner side of her, oh, that man is no good. Everybody, thought they were ready to bite your head off. Attitude. I told her, I used to tell the kids all the time, I can care less. Uh, uh, again, here today, your grades, you're going to get your grades better. But if your behavior is acting up, uh, again, that, that's, that's off the chain, no doubt. Because again, in the day, your attitude is key. You can be the worst worker in, 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 on the job. But if you have a good attitude, man, they can overlook a lot of stuff until you learn. <laughs> Your attitude is key. And somebody got this. The crucified life. God crucified my attitude. The inward beauty. The inward beauty. Number five, he goes on and says, we're going to get through. I got four more verses. Again, in verse four, he says, For after the manner of old times, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves in subjection to their own husbands, they were clothed in humility. They were clothed in humility. That's beauty right there. Let's go to verse 6. He says, even Sarah, even Sarah obeyed Abraham. The reason I brought this up because of verse 8, but I said I can't let this pass. Uh, he says, even Sarah obeyed, calling him Lord, whose daughter ye are as long as ye do well. That's a key part of the verse. Let's read it again. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, Calling him Lord. See, I'll never call him Lord, my husband Lord. <laughs> never. I'll call him the Lord for my husband, but I ain't going to call him Lord. <laughs> he, say, he says, Sarah, she said, you are the daughters of Sarah. But this is the comma. He says, comma, as long as you do what? Do well. As long as you do well, you're part of Abraham. Amen's covenant. <laughs> you step on the line. Hey, you look like your father the devil. That's what he said. He says, he said, you're not of Abraham, you of the devil. That's why he told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, You're an offense to me right now. Because he said, you don't, no, he says, you're not going to die. He says, when he was about to go, he says, no, be, be it far from thee, Lord. He says, you're an offense. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Somebody said, your church, said the church is going down. No, nah, it's not going down. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. It's going up. Amen. 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 It's going up. Praise the Lord. 
without an offense. Amen. The Bible says here today, when your husband's, again, let's look at someone, let's finish this up. It's a good Bible study, amen. Let's read back to verse 6 again. Even as Sarah, even as Sarah, everybody wants the promises of Abraham, the covenant of Abraham. I've been engrafted into the covenant. He says, <laughs> calling him Lord, whose daughters are ye, as long, as long as you do well. And be not afraid with any amazement. In other words, be surprised. Things upside down. If things get upside down, here today, we need you to support. Don't flip the flip out. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says Sarah laughed at her husband when he said that. He said, Man, this woman ain't even spiritual, man. She's not spiritual at all. He said, You're gonna have a baby. And she laughed. Hello. Come on. When locked in. See, you're gonna have a baby. God is about to bless. We're about to multiply. She laughed. Come on. Y'all ready to go up? Amen. Amen. Crucified life. We're talking about a crucified life tonight. Hey man, welcome. Give it a, you having a good time. I'm glad to see me in Bible study with us. I mean, Wilbur, Wilbur, Wilbur. Amen. Amen. Let's get I'm gonna move on. I'm trying to get to the verse I they gave me. It's, it's, you got to blame it on the verse of the day. I got this because of the verse of the day. Number number seven, he says, likewise, ye husbands. Let's get to the husbands. Amen. Oh, boy, here we go. Here we go, husbands. Yes. Preacher, sir. Let me hear you ladies smile now. That's what he says. He says, husbands, 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 likewise, dwell with them according to knowledge. Soul winning. We as men still have to soul win. Amen. Again, back to non-believing wife. If your wife's not saved, deal with her with knowledge. Deal with her with knowledge. And even if she is saved, we still have to use wisdom. Because the Bible goes on and says to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Amen. And amen. To uplift her. We love her. Amen. Again, we love our wife. I appreciate it. Amen. As unto as in the weaker vessel, being heirs together of the grace of life. He says we are to be heirs together of this promise of Abraham. Amen. We are to be heirs together in this thing. He said that your prayers be not hindered. He says treat her this way, love her this way, that your prayers can be answered. Amen. Amen. I made a few notes. Let me get to my notes here. Husbands, we are the spiritual head. Amen. Women are the weaker vessel. The Bible says that. Some ladies take offense to that, but we're not trying to knock a lady and nothing like that. But again in the day, the man was made to be the head. Again in the day, the spiritual, spiritual head. Amen. As we mentioned this morning, uh, Sunday morning about Adam was supposed to take the men in the garden. If he would have did his job, that serpent would have been squashed on his feet today. He would have shut it down right away, but he didn't. So, men, be, let's be the spiritual head and the weaker vessel because women deal with a lot of physical issues. Amen. They deal with a lot of physical issues. They get sick. They get tired easily. And so, we again, we have to use wisdom according to knowledge. Amen. For a while, in the early stage of my marriage, man, I was pretty hoorah. <laughs> I didn't realize that, amen. Because we, uh, the service was on various things, right? All day long and change diapers all day long. So you have to do all that. Amen. And so I come in sometimes that way. And so I had to realize again, I said, hey, what you been? What was my favorite phrase? What you been doing all day? <laughs> right? And so no doubt, but as I grew, as I grew, amen. As we grow, no doubt we realize, hey, again, she needs to lay down. She's tired. She's sick. She's got a headache. Right? Amen. All the husbands say amen. 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 Again today, and so we, again, we have to have that spiritual eye to say, again, let me pray for her. Let me pray for her. She's having a tough day. Amen. We're growing that. We got to grow in that. Amen. Every day, still, 25, 24 years later, I still gotta, I'm still learning. Amen. It, it never, it's never perfect. When will that magic ever be perfect? Probably never will be. 
And we grow in the grace and knowledge of Almighty God. Amen. And Sarah, Sarah, she, again, she laughed. About how we covered all that again. But so Abraham and Sarah, let's finish this up. I'm almost done. Abraham and Sarah were royalty in God's eyes. And we are also, we are heirs together. Let's get back to that. We are heirs together in verse verse. Uh, seven, we are heirs together. And let's go together, amen, in heirs and rule and reign and no doubt see great things happen. Let's finish back to verse eight. Verse eight, it says, finally, brethren, all be of all one mind, having compassion one to another. Love the brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. All this is so winning, amen. So winning, so winning, it's important. So winning in the home. That the children may know, so winning on the streets, that the neighbors may know, so winning in everything that we do, not just out in the streets, but even in our own homes. Everybody, Paul even brought it down to our own, Peter brought it to our own homes. Amen. Everywhere we go, let's be a soul winner. Amen. He said, Rendering no evil for evil. Uh, verse 9, I'm almost done. I got two more verses. Being evil, rendering no evil for no evil. Not rendering evil for evil. Everybody see that? Not railing for railings. In other words, they did it to me, so I'm going to do it back to them. Why? Because again, as Jesus hung on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know what they do. So went in, crucified life. He says, but like contrary wise, blessing, knowing that ye thereof are called, that ye should inherit a blessing. That's verse 9. So not rendering evil for evil. I'm going to get them back because they did this to me. No. Right? I'm not going to rail against them because they railed against me. No. He says, but contrary, let me be a blessing. Amen. Again, let's be more like Christ. Amen. Number 10, he says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they may speak no God. Amen. He went on about this. Let us eschew evil, do good, and let him seek peace and ensue it. We're going to stop right there. Amen. Amen. But everybody good tonight? We covered a lot. So in the crucified life, the crucified life. And so... I want to bring all that again. Let's be soul winners in every aspect of our lives. Amen. Every aspect of our lives. God help us to be better soul winners. Help us be crucified. Death, burial, and resurrection. Newness of life. Amen. And so we learn these things. We learn as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Almighty God. We learn these things. We grow in these things. No doubt to become better every day of our lives. To learn after the pattern of Christ. Amen. And so that was a lot of that. I want to stick that in there. And again, we want to, we had an excited weekend. Amen. An exciting weekend. We continue to make the devil mind. And again, so we want to calculate all these different things. Go back and hear it again. It's probably two Bible studies worth. But again, it's some good stuff. Amen. God bless you. I pray. Him. So again, next Tuesday, we will not be having we had an exciting time at our conference. Brother, try to get that ticket. Amen. Try to go. Whatever the case may be, we're going to have an exciting time. 50 year anniversary. It's an exciting time. Amen. In the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Reverend, we'll dismiss us in prayer. Amen. Let's run off. Amen. Jesus ran off for us. Let's run off for Jesus. Amen. 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 The crucified.